Studio One 6.2 just dropped and today we're going over some of my favorite new features. So I didn't do a video on the 6.1 update simply because personally, I felt like that update didn't have anything substantial, but 6.2 is a whole different story with some nice quality of life improvements. I won't go over everything because these updates always come packed with tiny little things, but I will go over the big ones and I'll also make sure to link the whole update list down below. Let's see what's new. Okay, so the first substantial update is for the takes to layers feature. Studio One has a handy feature called takes to layers, which you can access by clicking on the cogwheel at the bottom near the transport controls. This opens up the recording preferences in here you can turn this feature on. What this feature will do is automatically send any new recording takes to a new layer. And this is handy for comping vocals, which is when you take parts of different takes to create a new one. Let me demo this really quickly. So here I have recorded three takes. And if I wanted to create a master take from these three, then all I have to do is select the parts that I want using my mouse and that will automatically send them up to the top. Up until now, this was the only thing we could do with layers. But with 6.2, we now get a really important update, which allows us to do independent editing within layers, something that before we could only do on the main track. So then what this means is that if you press and hold the command or control key on your keyboard, this will turn the range selector tool to a regular mouse tool. And now you get a lot more control over these layers. If you use the mouse tool without any specific part of the layer highlighted, you'll be able to move that entire take down the arrange view. And if you use the mouse tool to click hold and then press the option or alt key and hold that as well and then drag you'll be able to duplicate that entire take within the layer track itself alternatively you could use the default range selector tool to select a comp segment by simply clicking on it to highlight it and then use the same steps from before to either move that segment or duplicate it down the arrange view as well. Now, aside from this, we can also now use other tools from our regular toolbar on these layers as well. So as mentioned before, the range selector tool was the only one available for layers, but now you can use other tools like your split tool to make cuts or even your eraser tool to delete segments and get the exact results that you want. The last thing that I want to mention here is that there is also an additional settings option that allows for displaying the layer name for tracks and channels and another for setting your layer expand preferences after recording. For the track and channel naming feature, before you could have your main track name be independent of your layer names. But now if you want, you can head over to your advanced settings in your Studio One preferences and then check off this little box titled Track Channel Names Follow Active Layer. What this will do is make it so that your main track will take the name of any active layer. So as you can see, the main track here, the comp track is called Vocal One. However, if I were to promote, let's say the second take to the top, the main track now becomes the name of that layer, Vocal Take Number Two. Alternatively, you could always use this little drop down arrow that's pointing left to switch to a different take if this is the way that you like to do it. Personally, I prefer the old way, but now you have a different option if you want to do it this way instead. Aside from this though, you also now have the option to set your preference for what happens after you record layers. The default option has always been to expand the layers after you finish recording, and that is still what I will use and recommend. But if you don't like this, you can now turn this off by checking off the expand layers after recording checkbox. Really quickly, if you're enjoying this video and you want to support what I do, then do me a huge favor and drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Both are free and they would really help me out. In return and as a way to say thank you, I have linked for you my productivity toolbar for Studio One down below. This is a free macro toolbar for your arrange view that combines a bunch of Studio One's production functions into time-saving one-click buttons. Again, this toolbar is completely free, so make sure to pick that up. Thank you for watching. Okay, the next update is called Auto Zoom, and as you can see, it comes in the form of a new button on the top panel. If you right click on this button, you'll be able to select between three options, Auto Zoom Vertically, Auto Zoom Horizontally, and Auto Zoom Full. So let me show you how this works. If I were to come up here and select Auto Zoom Vertically, Studio One will automatically zoom out and show me my entire project from a vertical standpoint and then lock that in. Once here, I can manually zoom or scroll horizontally, but vertically, my song is now locked until I manually zoom vertically again, at which point it would turn off the Auto Zoom Lock. The same concept applies to the horizontal option and for the Auto Zoom Full, as you might imagine, this will make it so that it zooms out both vertically and horizontally and locks that in place until you once again manually override it. If you like this feature, then you'll be happy to know that auto zoom also works in the editor view. So you can come down here and do the exact same thing. 
Moving on, another really nice efficiency improvement came in for event effects. In Studio One, you have the ability to add insert effects to not only channels, but also audio events in your range view. And this is particularly handy if you wish to add effects to specific parts only instead of the entire track. Before, to add an event effects, you had to open up the browser and then drag that effect from the effects panel to your desired audio events while pressing the option or alt key before dropping. This would effectively add that insert to only the audio event that you selected. With Studio One 6.2, however, we now get a dedicated events menu when you right click on the event itself. So as you can see within this menu, I can select one of my available ARA plugins that integrate flawlessly with Studio One like Auto-Tune, Melodyne, or Vocaline, or I can choose any regular effect by clicking down here and then selecting it from this list. The drag and drop feature is still super handy and still available, but now we do get the second option to get this done. Okay, the next update is regarding crossfades for audio events. Before, if you wanted to create a crossfade, you had to select two neighboring events here and then press the X key at which point Studio One would create one automatically for you. This option is still here and very useful, but if you want a more manual approach, you can switch over to your range tool make the selection for the area that you want to create a crossfade for, and then press the X key on your keyboard. The last update for the arrange view is super small, but super useful. Some of you, myself included, have had this on your wish list, so I am happy to announce that the stop marker finally has the option to stop playback. I'm not quite sure why this wasn't a thing before, but if you use markers a lot like me, then all you have to do is right click on the end marker and then check off the stop at marker checkbox. Doing so will make it so that when the play bar reaches the end marker, the song will stop. Well done, Presonus. Okay, moving on down to the piano roll, we finally get some production updates, and the first one deals with scales. Something that has been a part of Studio One for a while now is the ability to color your notes based on certain parameters, like part, pitch, or velocity. Well, with the 6.2 update, we can now color notes based on scale. And this is incredibly handy if you're trying to learn some theory. Once you select the scale option from the note color dropdown menu, and then select one of the available scales, any notes that are within the scale will be blue. And if they fall outside of the scale, then they will turn red. Of course, you could always lock in the scale so that you never place any wrong notes here, as you can see. But to me, this is a really handy feature for helping beginners learn their scales and some music theory. Another really useful feature here in the piano roll, and another one that I've also personally asked for, is scale highlighting. So check this out. If I uncheck the scale lock feature, you can see that the piano roll is made up of two colors dark gray and a light gray. The dark gray here represents the black keys of a piano, while the light gray represents the white keys. Well, if you turn on the scale lock feature with 6.2, the light gray now represents any notes that fall within the scale, while the dark gray represents any notes that fall outside of the scale. Again, if you're still trying to find your bearings with music theory, then this is incredibly handy because once you lock in your scale, you can use this highlight feature to very, very quickly and easily create some chords. A big part of production is automation, and I am happy to announce that MIDI automation has also gotten some new updates. Now in Studio One, you can add some automation in the arrange view, but also in the editor if you're using MIDI. And in Studio One 6.2, it is now possible to automatically stretch the automation when you time stretch MIDI notes. If you open up the piano roll, you can time stretch any MIDI notes by selecting your desired notes, hovering your mouse tool over the end, and then while pressing and holding the option or alt key, drag back or forth. Now this is different from elongating your notes because if I just do that without any modifier keys, you can see that I am independently moving the length of each of these chords. However, if I press that modifier key, I am moving them in relation to one another. Now this is not new, but now if you also activate this feature at the top here titled select part automation with notes, and then you select your notes and time stretch them as normal, any automation that you have written for these notes in the piano roll will also be moved so that both of them can stay synchronized for your performance. A while back, Presonus introduced a sort of smart arrow tool for the piano roll, and this was a special tool because it would change depending on where you used it. If you place that tool near the top of a note, it would allow you to mess with the velocity, and if you place it near the bottom, it would turn into a split tool that would allow you to split your notes. Well, there must have been some people who preferred the old mouse tool because in 6.2, we now have the option to either use this smart extended mouse tool or the basic one from before. 
Speaking of mouse features, in 6.2, you now also have the option to use a temporary split tool in the piano roll. In the arrange view, we have always been able to access a secondary tool that you designate by pressing and holding the command or control key. You can set this secondary tool to be any of the other available seven tools, and this is super handy as it allows for a more efficient workflow. The secondary tool that I always use is a split tool because aside from clicking and moving events, splitting is the second task that I do the most. I have always wanted that functionality in the piano roll, and in 6.2, we finally have it. To access a temporary split tool in the piano roll, all you have to do is hover over any MIDI note and then press and hold the shift and command or control key. Before, if you wanted to use a split tool, you had to manually switch over to it by either using the top toolbar here or by pressing the number two on your keyboard. Even with the keyboard shortcut though, if you wanted to go back to the mouse tool, you had to manually once again switch over. This new feature allows for a quick and temporary split tool that hopefully allows for faster editing. Okay, so now let's move on to some mixing and console improvements. With Studio One 6.2, it is now possible to copy any plugin from one channel to the other and include its automation. Copying plugins is not new, and we have been able to achieve this by simply dragging and dropping the plugin from one channel to the other. However, now if you drag over, but before you let go, press and hold the Option or Alt key, you should see a new pop-up window here that says Copy Effect plus automation. What this ultimately means is that we now have also transferred over the automation from that last channel onto this new track. Another small but time-saving improvement here in the console is that now whenever you want to invert the polarity of a stereo channel, you can do so for both the left and the right side at the same time by clicking just one. Before, if you wanted to flip both, you would have had to make two clicks, but now it gets done with only one. If you still only want to invert one side though, then you can do this by pressing and holding the Option or Alt key and then the side that you want to invert. By the way, if you don't see your polarity channels, you can unhide them by going over to the wrench icon on the top left and making sure that your input control checkbox is selected. One of my favorite features in Studio One is the ability to link any folder track to a bus. This is useful because it allows you to mix and process any similar tracks through a bus, but directly from the arrange view without having to open up the console. Well, in the 6.2 update, we also get two small but powerful updates that make this link behavior a lot better. The first is that now whenever you disable a folder track, it also now disables the bus and any inserts within. Before, if you disabled a linked folder track, it would only disable the tracks within, but not the bus itself. The second improvement is that the solo and mute link has also been improved. So now whenever you solo or mute a folder track, that gets properly reflected on the bus in the console as well. Last but not least, we have some improvements to my absolute favorite feature in Studio One, macros. If you go ahead and open up your macro organizer, you're going to see that we have a couple of new things here. First, we finally get a search bar so you can quickly and easily search for any of your macros. Additionally, once you find the macro that you're looking for, you can then click on this little shortcut button that will bring up the shortcuts pop-up window. And from here, you can easily set a keyboard shortcut to your macro. Before, both of these were only available in the keyboard shortcut window, not from the macro organizer. But now with this update, things should be a little bit more intuitive. Macros are truly a game-changing feature that can greatly improve your Studio One workflow. Earlier, I gave you a free macro toolbar, and if you want to learn more about how to use it and really just macros in general, then make sure to click this video right over here.